as I said before, if I can get my wife to do a video on quilting, that would be an addition to the uh, YouTube channel. Uh, today we're going to be finishing off the project I started actually January of this year. But because of technical problems and vacations, uh, I never did get it finished. Just to repeat uh, from uh, video uh, part one, uh, this is a 450 quad uh, running with a uh, KK 2.1 and a, and a Q-Brain uh, and uh, an FR Sky um, uh, receiver. Uh, we're not going to be discussing the modifications I did to the FR Sky. That will be for another video. What we'll be focusing on is I'll be explaining the different builds and how the motors are linked up to the QQ brain, how the QQ brain is plugged into the KK 2.1, and the programming needed to get the um, uh, get the uh, the Q brain and the KK 2.1 to work together, and then we'll do a demo a demo flight uh, to to show you how everything worked. Well, let's get started with the build, but it can become uh, it can become a little bit muddied. So let's start. First of all, the front of the quadcopter is at the bottom of your screen. The top is the rear, okay? So we're just kind of zoom out here a bit. Uh, take a look, okay? So here's the screen. That's towards the front of the quad. And uh, the buttons are at the back. Uh, a point, a note to yourself. Remember, the grounds are always to the edge of the board. This is for the connection to the receiver and this is the connection to the speed controller. So remembering that the uh, blacks are always to the edge of the board. Also remember for powering the KK 2.1 okay you need to have um, your power connection on the very first pin which is the which, which they label M1. So this is M1 M2, M3, and M4 on the KK 2.1. So we got that straight, and the power lead has to be on uh, M1 on the KK 2.1. Now this is where it can get confusing. When you look at the Q brain, okay, the power lead coming from the Q brain, which powers the KK 2.1, is on the M3 connection. Why? I do not know, but it is. So in order for me to line up my power lead, okay, which is M3, which controls the motor on the front, which controls the motor on the front left, I've laid out my Q brain as such so that in order to make everything line up with the wires, it's M3 here. Then to keep it straight, M2 is the second motor, the third motor becomes M1, and the fourth motor becomes M4. Uh, uh, I suppose that there are lots of other ways of laying it out and to make it work, but this is the default settings, and I'm doing that so that it's straightforward for everybody. So we're going to make M3 our motor 1, and we're going to make M2 the motor 2, we're going to make M1 the third motor, and M4, the fourth motor. So let's take a look at this a little bit more closely. So now we know that M3, okay, is our power lead, and so we take our uh, lead that has all three wires on it and connect it to M1. The next one, which is the orange lead, which is M2, but it's labeled S2, will go to your second pin configuration. The red wire, which is the uh, S1 or M1, okay, which is now back in the bottom right, goes to the third location, and M4, okay, S4 here, brown wire, goes to the fourth cable. That's as simple as it, as it gets. It's just confusing when you're reading all the documentation why this is all done this way. Follow these rules and you'll be able to connect your Q brain to your KK 2.1. Now that we have the uh, Q-Brain uh, connected to the KK2.1, we now need to connect the um, uh, receiver uh, to the uh, control board, and you have to follow the sequence. Now remembering that 
the bottom of your screen is the front of the quad. Okay, remembering that the ground always goes to the outside edge. And notice here that I put a little dot of the black over to the right. I just don't want to damage anything. I don't think you would, but it's possible, depending on how what the quality is of the board. So I put a little black dot to the outside edge, um, and then I have um, the center is red for, for the current, and then the left is the white or signal. Now, this is how this goes, starting at the bottom here, okay? This is aileron, okay? This goes to whatever receiver you're using, the aileron. The next one is your elevator, and this goes to the receiver to whatever the elevator is on, on your system. It could be DSN2, uh, and then depending on the receiver, it could be a different pin configuration. Using FR Sky, uh, these are all programmable. I, um, I just use the, the defaults. The next one down is the throttle, okay, and then after the throttle is the rudder, and then finally you'll need an auxiliary somewhere free, and you're going to use this to, um, uh, to use that switch for your leveling. I have it set up to uh, one of my free triple switches on my unit. So with that in mind, you should now have your, your receiver connected to your KK2.1. Okay, there's one more item we need to discuss uh, to complete our setup. And before we get into the programming of the KK2, is the propeller setup, okay? And you'll notice here that I have put little arrows on this. These, the propeller in the top left, you'll notice when we get into KK2 programming, it actually tells you, remember the front of the quad is here, and the very top left, this propeller goes clockwise. It is reversed to what you normally have on a plane. So you just have to note that, okay? And you have to order, when you get the multi-star multi kit with the motors, it comes with two props, the clockwise and the counterclockwise. Because this motor and the back left motor, those are the regular counterclockwise motors. And this motor here, which is the back right, this goes, uh, this is a clockwise motor here. Uh, so you just need to know that when you're mounting the units and when you're testing them, you're not going to test them with the props on, okay? We'll get into that a little bit later when we start firing it up. Because you may need to change, as you know, if you've flown before, if you simply change these wires here, uh, just actually reverse any two of those wires. Remember the motors are actually AC motors. Changing any of these two wires actually changes the direction of the motor. So those are the props. These props are marked as as uh, clockwise, and they have an R on them. I, maybe that means reverse, I have no idea, but they are marked with an R. Uh, but you can also tell by the shape. I'm not that good at it, so that's why I put a marking on the prop telling me what direction they go in. The next okay, let's get started with the final phase. Uh, we're going to do uh, the basic programming of the KK2 chip. Um, to start with, uh, we're going into the uh, menu. Uh, let me go right up to the top so you see what it's like. You'll get a beep. The Pi Editor, we're not going to need to change. Believe it or not, a lot of discussion on it, but you don't need to change that. The defaults are adequate. Go down and do a receiver test. This is to make sure that your radio, uh, and so we'll go in and do a receiver test. And then you just move your sticks, okay, making sure that everything, your ailerons match your ailerons, your elevators match your elevator stick. That's to confirm that everything that you plugged in here that went to your uh, receiver uh, is actually connected correctly. So that's a nice little test. Everything I have is correct. Uh, mode setting, you don't need to touch. It's fully explained in the manual. Well, it's explained. I don't know if it's fully explained in the in the manual. Stick scaling, we don't need to touch. Misleading settings, we don't need to touch. Self-letting settings, we do need to touch. And this is probably the most important uh, for your setup. You go into the self-level test, and there's P-gain and P-limit. For those of you that are familiar with dual rates, this is the same as the dual rates uh, for an airplane. It is the the amount of throw, okay, and it is the rate in which things move, okay. 
So the first number of the P gain is, is actually uh, when it is all leveling, is it going to be coming back quickly or slowly? Uh, I'm setting this to, if you look at my numbers, the P gain is 50 and 20. And the access trim roll is 30 and the access trim pitch is 30 or 31. This is important because it's going to lower the, these numbers here that I'm, I'm giving you are going to make it very soft for auto leveling. If you don't have that on, when it tries to level, it will do so very quickly and you'll try to compensate with your stick. This is for beginner mode. This is really where you need to go. So that's 50 and 20 and 30 and 30. And we'll go back, uh, going down, camera stab, uh, sensor test. Uh, I normally run a sensor test to make sure that all your gyros are, are working and it's saying everything's okay. And ACC calibration is um, really important. This is really getting your uh, what your level is. It's going to come up here in a second. Calibrating. Okay, so all your gyros now are calibrated, so you should do your calibration. Continue. And that is, oh, show motor layout. This is the other part, and we talked about this just a few seconds ago. Notice that you have your motor, motor layout. Your number one is moving in the clockwise, two is counterclockwise, uh, three is clockwise, and four is counterclockwise. Now this is where we're going to test it uh, in a second, where you actually have to start the motors without the propellers, maybe put a bit of tape on there uh, on the uh, motor arms so that you can see which way the uh, motors are running. So this is the uh, motor layout for, for, for this unit. There are others, uh, but uh, this is, this is, this is uh, the layout that, uh, that I have. Uh, back and load motor layout you can load this would be for your tri for your octos uh, and even planes uh, we, we don't need to go in there uh, debug factory reset and that is everything that you need to program uh, on the KK on the uh, KK 2.1 you can read the others but this is uh, will get you flying and flying reliably the other thing you need now that you have your Accessory, your um, um, uh, have your accessories that will set up your auto level. Let's take a look. Putting your uh, rudder to the hard left, that's going to arm your KK2. Without doing that, pushing your rudder to the hard right, did I say that? The hard right, it will not arm. Now that it's armed, it's ready for flight. The other thing you need to do, remember our auxiliary that we plugged in over here, that's going to control. Laps one, laps two. See where it says self level is on? Don't start flying unless your self level is on. It'll be too erratic for a beginner. So please laps make sure one. that your self level is on laps two. Uh, before you arm your uh, heli. Arm it. Now you're armed with self leveling on. Now you're ready to, at this stage, test your prop directions as we said, take your props off, put tape on, make sure that you're following the, uh, the rotational direction. If they're not following the right direction, just reverse uh, two of the uh, uh, plugs from the speed controller to that motor and it will be going in the right direction. So before we run our test light, one final thing to remember. Make sure that your wires are well attached to the frame so that they don't get caught in the blades. Use tie wraps like I did to make sure everything is secured and, uh, and out of the way. So this is the uh, uh, quad as per uh, this video and how she flies. Arm it. Light goes on. And away you go.
case, so I'm not going to be doing a lot of flying, but I just wanted to demonstrate that everything functions well.